Kira Dalinina, the European University at St. Petersburg, when the past meets the future, the history of acquisition of P.V. de Chavannes works by Sergei Shukin. Thank you. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here. It is a great honor for the university community at in St. Petersburg. And my subject is rather limited in scope. Uh, Puvi de Chavan uh, was not a central figure for the Shukin collection, but I believe that this story uh, shows us some interesting features that we can add to our idea of Shukin's collectorship. In Shukin's collection, there are only two paintings by Puvi de Chavan, uh, the poor fisherman and the compassion, uh, 1879 and 1887. Uh, both are quite typical for the painter, but they do not give us an, any idea uh, why he was so uh, well known in his time and his importance for the art history. Uh, this is connected uh, to the history of uh, Shukin's uh, acquisitions. He came to Paris the year P.V. de Chavan died and he was still quite famous, but there were new painters on the horizon who brought the new Russian buyer far from symbolism to other uh, territories and realms. But still Shukin uh, was fascinated by PV and the history of his interest might be very interesting and instructive for us. The very first PV in Russia appeared in Dmitry Botkin's collection about 1882 to 83. It's a very early dark PV. It's his uh, village pompier, village firefighters. Uh, this looks much more like the uh, French historical painting, uh, and it doesn't tell us much about the future styles of PV. Forty years later, Botkin's nephew, Sergei Shurkin, would buy two other pictures. He bought this La Commiseration from Durand Ruel for 12,000 francs. A year later, in the year 1900, he will buy the Pauvre Pêcheur uh, for 14,000, one of the variants of this painting. So PV became one of the very first painters to be bought by Shukin, and he is represented by two very typical works, and ultimately allegorical Pannoa and his most famous composition from the age. This interest of this new collector to the over of uh, PV, who had just died, aged 74, and it was quite typical for the Russian taste in the pro-Western circles. Before Sergei Shukin, his, bride, his brother uh, Ivan Shukin bought some PVs, but this collection did not come to Russia ever. And very soon, Ilya Ostrokhov would also buy uh, one pastel and one uh, drawing by PV, his uh, sketch for uh, the dream and his femme au bord de la mer. Uh, one more drawing will be found in Fyodor Schechtel's collection. Uh, he bought this sketch uh, from Duran Ruel. Pavel Dilarov in St. Petersburg bought an early uh, Allegory de la Vie sketch, although now its attribution is disputed. And the Hermitage also has uh, some works by PV from other Russian collections especially the prints from the Duran Riel collection. Temporary exhibitions also brought PV to Russia. The French art exhibition of 1896 featured one work by PV, a large sketch for his Ludus Propatria for the Amiens Museum. Uh, this uh, work is now preserved in the Walter Art Gallery in Baltimore. This must be the uh, work that was shown 
in Russia in 1896. Uh, at the World of Art Mir Iskustva exhibition, uh, three years later, uh, three works by PV were shown. These were all allegories, all sketches for large wall-mounted panel, and they were all uh, valued in five-digit uh, amounts, much more expensive than the Russian works. The only painter who was more expensive was Degas. And uh, these works were much abused and cursed. For example, Ilya Repin cursed both the dealer and the organizers. He said that Degas' uh, mediocre paintings were uh, astonishingly expensive, uh, 40,000 rubles, well, while they should have uh, costed 400 rubles. Uh, and the Russian amateurs would uh, offer lots of money to Duran Duran to just bring up the hype. And PV was also criticized and abused. You are hypnotized, wrote Repin. If you added a nymph by Neff into this PV de Chavan, you would just melt uh, out of uh, adoration. However, uh, my subject is the reputation of the painter among those who were really interested in contemporary French art and Russian amateurs knew a lot about this painter even before his works arrived to Russia. The very first writer to uh, highlight this new star was Emile Zola and his letters from Paris were regularly published in Russian press in translation uh, from 1875 to 1880. And so Zola told in these letters about the Paris Salon uh, of uh, 1876, where he discussed the panels by Pivy de Chavan uh, with Saint Genevieve. And Zola lamented about the lack of great names, and the exhibition of the year was the same as last year, and the next one will be the same. It's impossible to discuss. Uh, uh, in a sober manner, all these 2,000 paintings and the geniuses of the old have all departed and the living artists are struggling to reach the level of these great creators. And his uh, review of the exhibition begins with the so-called grandiose art. And the first artist he describes is Pivy de Chavan. Here we have the whole text on the slide. Uh, and Zolea doesn't show us lots of details, but he uh, emphasizes these uh, features of his monumental art that will make uh, Pivy's uh, glory in the future. It's new decorative art that brings a uh, peaceful, great idea with clear and calm originality to a public building where this panel would hang. And the Russian visitors who saw the Russian, uh, who saw the Paris uh, uh, art in the 80s and the 90s, they say the same as Zola, Alexander Benoit and Mikhail Nesterov uh, were interested in this decorative aspect of PV and uh, Benoit was interested in the landscape aspects of the panels at Sorbonne and uh, the Pantheon and Nesterov visited the Pantheon as the showcase of monumental paintings and only PV interested him there because it was to him I quote, a spiritual rebirth of the old Florentine frescoes, end quote. And talking about PV, both these artists used the word poetry, which was very important for this age of Russian art, and it was uh, opposed to the old ideological engaged uh, art, the new art was poetical as opposed to the previous styles and the same word poetry was used by Levitan 
to oppose his work to the previous styles. The Mir Iskustva world of art group uh, was very impactful uh, and uh, both their publishing and their exhibitions featured uh, PV de Chavan. We have six reproductions of PV de Chavan in the first issue of their journal in 1899 and the obituary was written by Dmitry Filosofov of this uh, journal coincided with PV's death. And the next issue begins with a big article on Dmitry Levitsky from the 18th century, this uh, genius Russian painter. And right after it we have an article by Diaghilev where he insists on the fact that the beauty in art is temperament expressed in images. And for Diaghilev, the most important uh, value of art is, I quote, in its uh, expression of the creator's personality and its correspondence to the personality of the viewer, end quote. This is a new manifesto for the new generation and uh, the reproductions that accompany this article, this manifesto, uh, are four works by P.V. de Chavan and Stasov reacted to this with an uh, angry retort in his famous article, The Poor of the Spirit. He says that P.V. de Chavan's hope is hideous, distorted, with an ugly, stupid face. She sits naked on a hill with some kind of an odd uh, flower in her uh, hand. She is just malarkey and stupidity. And the Holy Grove is above this and it's very academical, very boring, very wooden. These women alternately naked and draped, these pseudo antique angels, this is all just despair and dullness. End quote. But these curses could not have changed the situation. P.V. de Chavan's reputation in among Russian uh, pro-Western artists is already very high. So it was quite uh, logical for Shukin to begin his collectorship with buying P.V. de Chavan. And many visitors of his uh, uh, manor wanted to see the very P.V. Uh, Margarita Sabashnikova wrote that she saw Monet, Renoir, Degas, Carrier, Whistler, and finally the P.V. de Chavan, his pauvre pêcheur. Uh, my gaze was uh, joyful and my heart was trembling because the truth was victorious and triumphant here. Uh, that's what Sabashnikova wrote uh, in 1903. She was Maximilian Voloshin's wife to be. Uh, PV was listed by other writers as the most valuable painting in this collection, and Nordman Severova wrote in 1910 as about PV that he was equally valued with Degas. Uh, this uh, acceptance of PV was prepared by the criticism and exhibitions and for Shukin himself this kind of catalyst was his brother Ivan. Uh, Ivan Shukin uh, when he got his inheritance picked the most important names very quickly when he began collecting. These were Manet, Renoir, Cicely, PV, Whistler, Cezanne and Van Gogh. For the last two painters Ivan Shukin was the first Russian buyer and so in the year 1900 uh, he would sell away this collection and he would begin he would begin buying old masters but he managed to infect his uh, elder brother Sergei with his passion for newer art and so the first acquisitions by Sergei Shukin were those that were expected, as Tugendhal wrote in 1914. Both brothers 
made their first steps in collectorships uh, by uh, using their great taste, their subtle taste that later on would be uh, substantiated many times by other acquisitions. The similarity of the new French collections of Ivan and Sergei will lead to many mistakes of the researchers, and Paris dealers also used to mix them up. One mistake is found in the catalogue of the Vé de Chavannes of 2010, where the major specialist on him, Aimé Brown Price, writes that Sergei Shukin visited the Vé de Chavannes in 1894 in his studio and could see the panel um, uses greeting the genius, which in 1910 would cause serious problems between Matisse and Shukin. Of course, this couldn't have happened. Shukin only appeared in the artistic circles of Paris in 1898, but Ivan was known there earlier, and uh, a year before that, his name appeared in the notes of Duran Rell. The only Shukin that could visit Puvi could be only Ivan. Uh, uh, Sergei um, um, didn't meet Puvi alive. And we also know at least one work by Puvi that Ivan Shukin definitely had. That was the head of a man, Anfas, uh, sold uh, in the Hotel Trio. Uh, we don't know which exactly it is, because the information on this painting is uh, different in uh, various sources. Puvé de Chavan could uh, be preserved in Sergei Shukin's collection uh, by two uh, wonderful paintings that were bought at the early stage of his collection, but this name appears once again in 1910, and the story is dramatic. Sergei Shukin had almost given up the dance and music that he commissioned to Matisse uh, at the moment, and uh, this is mentioned very often. Uh, the, we know this story thanks to the correspondence of Shukin and Matisse, and uh, the memories of Matisse's daughter, Margaret de Thuy. Uh, Matisse's biographer, Hilary Sperling, describes it like this. In everything that occurred during the next days, Matisse only bled the Bernheims. They came to a sea with bad news that Shukin was refusing the panels and was buying panels by Pevé de Chavannes instead. And the latter is so huge that it can only be displayed in Matisse's studio. The artist uh, was probably misunderstanding what was going on and agreed to the Bernheims. He looked as a boxer in the knockout. His hands started to shake um, and in so he suffered from insomnia. The daughter remembered that Puvis de Chavannes panel uh, was extraordinary because of its uh, figures that resembled ghosts, that this clash of the art of the past and the future uh, was um, helpful for Matisse because Shukin understood that the commission of the dance and the music was a horrible mistake. He preferred to buy Puvi and left for Moscow, but he kept thinking about Matisse and then two days ago he changed his mind and bought the commissioned panels from Matisse. He then wrote that the pa panel by Puvi de Chavannes meant nothing more for him. He wrote, in Paris, when I purchased the Puvi, I was under the impression of my youth memories when I was fond of Puvi back then. Then he said that he didn't like Puvi at all. Uh, Foreman, who came to EC to help pack the panel, told that Matisse had some point uh, was in panic. It seemed to 
to him that the figures of his two panels laid out on the floor are uh, moving under the evil gaze of the muses of Pivi de Chavan. The artist for a long time could not really understand what had happened. Everything about Matisse in this story is pretty accurate, but there is lots of confusion around Pivi. Uh, it was Ivan who could see it, not Sergei in 1894. And I would disagree with the authors and with Natalia Semenova on the matter whether Shukin took Pivi to Moscow. No, he didn't. It never reached Moscow. It's clear that the huge canvas remained in poor Matisse's studio for a while and remained there when Matisse received a Shukin's correspondence from the train. Moreover, Shukin wrote about this to Matisse himself in November 1910. If the Bernheims reject any offer, that means offers of exchange, then I will ask you to keep a Puvis panel in your studio until my death. Uh, in the same letter, he also wrote, Here I see that the panel, however beautiful, is a little bit in the Pompier style, and I don't like the drawing, so I don't have uh, to uh, be sorry uh, for anything except for a waste of money. And this was probably confusing for the researchers. It's obvious that by saying here, uh, he doesn't... Uh, mean that the panel arrived to Russia. He just meant that in Moscow he was surrounded by something else. Uh, he, in the end, returned the PV to Bernheims in exchange for the girl with the tulips and lost 10,000 francs. Uh, the panel remained at the Bernheims until the 1920s, then it was exhibited in the salon and reproduced in the catalogues. We know that this um, panel didn't appear in the Mary's Kustwa exhibition in 1899 in St. Petersburg, even though Emma Brown Price writes so, and uh, we don't even know for sure where it is now. Probably it is in Paris in the Opera Comique, but the owners do not respond. Uh, why are we looking at this uh, panel so closely? This is not the best of his works. It's obvious even from the reproductions from the uh, paper uh, de Beaux-Arts, uh, which was uh, such a difficult problem for Matisse. This is way worse than the panels for the Pantheon or for the museums in Amiens and Lyon. We are interested not in its quality, but in its very appearance in the story of the dance and the music of Matisse. Uh, my predecessors thought that Shukin was afraid of the misunderstanding and turned to Bernheim's asking to find something monumental for him. We don't know that these words were pronounced. We do know that the uh, panels by Matisse were substituted by Puvi's panel. Uh, one panel was substituted by the other. Natalia Semenova, based on Shukin's phrase, in Paris, when I bought Pervy, I was so much under the influence of my youthful memories, when I was so fond of Pervy, um, that he meant the village firefighters mentioning this old Pervy that is now uh, kept in the state hermitage and which he used to keep in his uncle's gallery amongst the Barbies on paintings. But I would argue with my colleagues, uh, this painting gave no idea of what kind of an artist Puvi would become later on. But uh, the idea that was uh, preserved in the Russian art society, uh, the idea of a new genius of monumental art, could push the collector to make make uh, such a request. Um, probably um, if Matisse, uh, who seems too radical for monumental pieces today, then Puvis as the classic of new monumental painting could 
said uh, prepare the ground, uh, but we cannot find any proof of this apart from the quotes and facts in the uh, second half of the 20th century. Uh, there are more and more new facts of the influence of Pumi's art on the artists of the future generations, from quiet post-impressionists to the most radical experimentators. Those are Gauguin, uh, Van Gogh, uh, Matisse, and even Picasso himself. Russian artists were also on this list, Borisov Mosatov, Nesterov and Petrov Vodkin. Um, very few people in the early 20th century saw this link of the new art with the classical tradition that uh, traced its way from modernists to the classics through Pavi de Chavan. Jakob Tugendhat wrote about this in 1914 when Pavi de Chavan was uh, viewed as dated. I stress all the features that I mentioned before of Picasso so his deep spirituality, his statical composition, his love for rhythm that is uh, center aimed. Later on, he became his own antithesis, but he always remained a fanatic and a Spaniard um, with religious transcendental traits. Uh, even his females are painted on wood like true icons. He could be the new Puvi de Chavan. He could be deeper and more religious than Puvi de Chavan. That was published in Apollo in 1914. Probably Sergei Shukin felt something similar to this. So the appearance of the name of Puvi in the story of the refusal to buy the dance and the music might be uh, purely by chance uh, that has to do with the rarely big size of the work. But I think there is a historical logic this that uh, was so um, usual for Sergei Shukin. I'd like to ask one question. Can we go back to the page from the catalog of the Dangulex exhibition? Uh, just tell me how to do that. Have you tried comparing the price for Pervé de Chavon exhibited by Dagilev in Russia and the French prices of the same period? Yes, I'll plan that before my piece is published. I think they are higher. Uh, because I compared the prices for Degas and they equaled Paris prices. These are not round numbers. I think this was uh, a converted price. Uh, ruble was uh, worth three and a half francs at this time and if we compare uh, the prices of the paintings that found their way to Sergei Shukin will get equal prices. So I uh, suppose that Puvi de Chavan cost probably around the same. For Dagelev this was normal because in the Scandinavian exhibition of um, the 70s the prices uh, corresponded to the prices in Danish krono the same year. I look into that because we have an earlier work uh, that's even less and there are many notes by your unreal, but of a later time. What is unreal? Uh, 40,000 rubles for uh, the jockey. Uh, this is probably a typo, and his contemporaries mentioned that uh, when Dagilev was quarreling with Repin, and I was answering to him, ignored the question of the price. This is completely incredible. Not now, but back then. Dear colleagues, if you have any questions or comments for the reports, you're welcome. I uh, thank you for the reports. They are very interesting. And I had a question 
uh, concerning the revelations and their sources. Ivan and Sergei Shukins, when they came to Paris, Pavide Shavan uh, wasn't uh, so well perceived in Russia because Tassov's influence was strong here. He was really popular among the artists, first of all, and in the artistic environment, this interest was deep and uh, the artists influenced the tastes. All the collectors, Ostrohov and Sergei and Ivan Shukins, whom we mentioned, were friendly with Fyodor Botkin, who was one of the first to come to Paris. And I wanted to ask if you have researched uh, the uh, possible inter in, uh, mutual influence because uh, the French-speaking people thought that it was Fyodor Botkin who influenced the early collections of Ivan Shukin. All his tours around the studios they took together, there are memoirs of this. Fyodor Botkin uh, was one of the first uh, to uh, help Sergei Shukin meet the artists. Uh, so it's interesting how the memoirs of the youth uh, are connected uh, with uh, the artists, because Fyodor Botkin was an artist, a symbolist, and the artist who was uh, developing the modern uh, he came to Paris, followed by Ivan, and this question of the influence of Fyodor on the early tastes of Ivan, on uh, the first stages of his collection, that has to do with Pavé de Chavan, I think is very important and needs to be thoroughly researched because it does change our views on the policy of collecting by the Shukin brothers. Uh, thank you. It is indeed a very interesting remark and a true one. Of course, I was first interested in Sergei and um, I wouldn't really reach into Ivan's collection because we're limited in time. Of course, that's true. And the artists, as uh, people who have the artistic taste, did influence um, the perception of Pevida Shavan in Russia, perhaps more than uh, texts. Uh, though we know from the analysis of texts that uh, some words uh, said by Zola and then repeated over and over again are also seen here. So, of course, uh, since uh, we didn't know a lot about Ivan Shukin until late, this is really interesting uh, for researchers of both Ivan Shukin and Pervida Shavan in Russia and in general. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? No more? Thank you, dear colleagues. So tomorrow we meet again for our last day at 10 a.m.